today on Fox Bros Fast and Furious. A coyote attack sparks a lifelong obsession, and Fox Bros Abner Druckenmiller finds himself in the middle of all of the Washington action. But it won't go off without the unexpected. Wow, look at that. So I'm trying to think what Kai was going through right now. That's what I'm talking about. Burn down, baby. Washington State. Split the place in half, and it's almost like two completely different worlds. On the west side, you've got crazy amounts of forest, rugged mountains, and all the touristy stuff you can handle. That's all fine and dandy, but I'm not here on vacation, and I didn't come for the famous apples either. I'm here to hunt, and if you want coyotes, then you'll need to head east. Check out the landscape. It's the opposite of what you'll find at Pike's Market. Here you've got flatlands, valleys, and unlike Seattle, not much rain. The dry conditions and open prairie grasses make for the perfect coyote habitat. This is exactly why local coyote hunter Jerry Malbach and I find ourselves in the field at first light. We got a huge coulee that runs down through here. And uh, last time I called this, it, it was only a matter of seconds and we had one just charge in. A veteran caller in a quarter moon gives us just the advantage we like. First day in Washington for our first day of coyote hunting. The sun's just coming up over there. We got about 52 degrees. Funny thing is, Jerry is superstitious. He believes that a dead coyote on the first stand brings bad luck. <laughs> Our goal is to not kill a coyote we, on the first stand. Are, we yeah. gotta wait till the second or third yeah, stand to kick the day off. Usually when you get one on the first stand, you're, you're done for the day. <laughs> so we kill one on the first stand, it's your fault. Well, well you don't have to pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry also believes in absolute concealment to the terrain. Even his glasses have a camo pattern. The curse of wearing glasses. The wind blows into our face and we prepare for action. Ironically, hoping for none. Light wind and first light, you can't draw it up any better. But there is just one problem. Someone forgot to tell the coyotes. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. We didn't want to call coyote in on the first stand. Malbec said that it's bad luck if he kills a coyote in the first stand, so. Stand number two is where we're gonna get serious. On we go. Heading to a nearby livestock operation where the coyotes have made for a rancher's nightmare, killing calves. <coughs> this time, we bring a decoy. A crow circles overhead the ultimate eye candy for a timid coyote. If a coyote is close by, they're gonna see that crow flying around there. They're gonna get curious and be like, well, there's definitely something over there. Let's go check it out. Looks like theory number two holds true. down baby <laughs> out of boy the squeaker those high pitches just perks their interest you know they can't hardly say no to it it's like me with a cinnamon roll you know I gotta have it <laughs> a crow can usually spot you man yeah. and he didn't spot us and you know that 
that just makes me feel real warm and fuzzy all over. For me, it's all about fooling them. And that's the reward, you know, you've outsmarted that, that coyote. And uh, there's nothing better than that. First one of the year. There we go. Not too bad. Looks like we definitely have a young of the year here. Thick fur for this time of the year, for the most part, even for that young one, you know it. Yeah, it's surprising that they fur up quite early here. Well, that was a good stand, man. That we had that crow come in, and you know, that creates confidence in your stand whenever you have those magpies and crows flying, doesn't it? When I see a crow come in like that and it doesn't flare off, that means it has not seen us. Well, if a crow isn't going to see you, a coyote surely will not see you. Coming up, a coyote attack turns Jerry Malbach's life upside down. Then, Mother Nature whips up something fierce. This dirt is just making visibility so poor that you can't even see. You're watching Fox Bros Fast and Furious. You're watching Fox Bros Fast and Furious. In the world of predator hunting, everyone has a story to tell. We can either set up here or, or go. Each story makes us part of who we are. It defines the passion inside and explains why predators can be the most thrilling animal to pursue. But what happens when the tables are turned? Well, it was about three o'clock one morning and we had actually just started leaving our dogs out at night. For Jerry Malbach, a single coyote attack changed his life forever. I mean, it, it was obviously very loud for me to hear it, you know, clear up the driveway and in my bed. And the, my driveway was approximately an eighth of a mile long. And the fight was at the end of the driveway. I went screaming down the end of the driveway and all I could see was basically shadows in the dark. Oh, it was horrible, man. Just growling and snarling and he was down on the ground, you know, just you know, just like a pup distress or whatever. I, at that time, I didn't have a clue that it was coyotes. I thought it was just a bunch of dogs attacking my dog. Hey, 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 get, get, get out of here, go, get, he, Man, they, they really worked him over. Took a big chunk of meat out of his hind quarter, you know, and they, one of them had had him by the throat. We were able to get him through it. You know, he lived. Jerry's payback turned into a lifelong obsession in pursuit of coyotes. Absolutely, to the core, to the bone personal. Yeah, it was payback time. From that point on, it turned into about a six year obsession. You know, every spare minute <laughs> that I had, whether it be before work, after work, on the weekend, a holiday, whatever. Over time, Jerry's love affair with coyotes has shaped him into one of the most well-respected and prolific predator callers in the country. Which is why when he hits his favorite sound on the call, you better be ready for action. Took off running, he was already dead, he just didn't know it. You can look by look at their teeth and see how wore down they are. If you look back here at the back molars, you can see how old they are and wore down. When I call in and you know, an old grizzled veteran man, uh, that's really rewarding. You know, it just makes you feel good because you I mean, you've done your job well when you get one of those. He's he, he's pretty experienced. That's why he did what he did. Wow, look at that. We'll explain coming up. And the boys learn a lesson in predator hunting. Here he comes.
You're watching Fox Pros Fast and Furious. You see bunnies running? Coyotes are running, they get the rabbit. Get the rabbit, get the rabbit. <laughs> We're hunting in eastern Washington with one of Fox Pro's original field staff members, Jerry Malbach. Our day begins early in the small town of Connell, Washington. A full day of calling starts at sunrise and leads us down many rugged trails. Sagebrush and deep gorges hold the coyotes and there's only one way to get them. Sneak in close and find the right sound to trigger their appetite. It's, it's up to him to produce now. I supplied the ground. I've done my fair share. Now. The pressure's on him to make it happen. No pressure, let's get her done. When Jerry told me that I could pick up the call and start calling, I was like, yes, I can't wait because I was just itching at the, you know, I was just itching to get out there and throw my call out there and see if this PA boy had what it took to call one in. All we've, all we've been seeing all morning, I mean, there's coyote scat everywhere here. Yep. So if he doesn't call one in, <laughs> not, not my sure. call. <laughs> We enter one of Jerry's old stomping grounds. This ranch is littered with coyotes. If we don't kill a coyote back in here today, something is wrong. Now it's my turn to hit the call. We get out there, I set up the call. I went to my uh, bread and butter sound, nutty nut hatch. To me, it sounds like a stuttering chicken, but. Uh... Stuttering chicken? See that big tree? Hey, maybe. He's coming down that but it proves to be just the sound to cut through the growing winds and triggers a bite. We got 20 mile an hour gusts going on out here and that coyote came from the other hillside. The other hillside. Well, yeah, he's a good half a mile out. At least. He wouldn't have heard a hand call that far away. Right. And there's no way. So, you know, the extra volume makes a difference. <laughs> that was awesome, playing the nutty nut hatch sound, dude. <laughs> bringing the bird sounds from back east. That was sweet. <laughs> well, that just goes to show you, it, you know, just because you don't have a nutty nut hatch here in your area doesn't mean that not they're all. not going to respond. They just think something over there is in distress and I got to go eat it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's an, an older male. Um, it's got to be a male because I mean, look at those ears. He's been fighting. All tore like, up like that. He's all, yeah, beat up. Fighting from breeding and things. Yep. And... It's, he's one of the boss dogs around here for sure. And he was a hungry coyote coming to get some vittles. He was all business. He wasn't uh, fearful of anything. He didn't come in uh, timid at all. Right. So yeah, he's he's one of the top dogs in the area. Running the roost. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good job, Ab. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Fur down. Fur down, man. The rewarding Fur feeling fans. doesn't last long. We are reminded that weather conditions play a major role in calling predators. I mean, we just can't call in this stuff. This is crazy. Wow. Strong winds turn ridiculous in minutes. We now have a new challenge. Once airborne, the dust turns visibility to zero. I mean, it was absolutely crazy. You couldn't even see to drive down the highway. It felt like you were driving in fault. And this is in the middle of the day. Still to come, wind and dust won't slow this coyote hunt. The coyote action is about to cut loose. Windstorm has passed. It looks very promising if they will put some coyotes on the ground today. Sunrise signals a start to something special. I don't appreciate or enjoy anything better than coming out here in the morning, you set up on a stand in the sagebrush and you watch the world wake up. It's just, it's awesome. It's just awesome. Jerry isn't the only hunter in the family. 
He's 11, going on 12. Meet Jared, the next generation. I started him out with me last year, but he's not able to take a gun with him yet. 12 is the age needed to hunt in Washington. But having those young eyes on a stand are a real benefit. For now, he gets call placement duty. I mean, it means a lot to him. It just makes his whole year, basically. We get to business overlooking a deep sagebrush valley. A magpie generally leads to one thing. A fast-moving coyote dodges through the sagebrush below. Yeah, it's coming through the sagebrush, just watch. The excitement is just, it's amazing before you pull that trigger. It's just like, there it is. Opportunity. Here one second, but gone the next. He's got his nose, he's got his ears, and he's got his eyes. He's a top dog predator, you know? He's number one out here. We shake it off and head to a new stand. This time a rocky ledge overlooking a windblown draw. When I've got a, a good stiff wind blowing, I go totally to crosswind calling. More wind means we wait longer. Yeah, it's a coyote. After 20 minutes, a coyote finally shows up. Problem is, it takes a seat on that scab rock. If, if they start holding up on you, you got to change the sound you're throwing at them. Just change the whole scenario on him, you know, mix it up a little bit. I, I'll, I get on the mouth call and try to bring the interest back up again. You got to keep that coyote coming to you. Here he comes. Jerry hits the Kayai and it does the trick. Oh, he stopped again. He stopped again. He's coming. He's coming. Fifty yards at a time. The gap narrows. He's gonna come right up on. He's watching us right now. Stay still. Atta boy. <laughs> nice job, Jerry. We nice think... job. I... Way to get him See, in here. I, I do know how to do it. <laughs> yes, you do. It was awesome. Wonderful. Amazing. <laughs> Good baby. That kite was out there. Four, four or five hundred yards. You got on the sky and he says, get ready, I'm going to hit a pup distress. When he laid down, I knew it was over. He wasn't going to come any closer. So, you know, at that point there, the only thing you can do is, uh, reach into your bag of tricks and your yeah. experience That's and, right. and talk to him. Let's go check this thing out, man. All right, all right. Oh, there we go. That's a pretty coyote, man. Oh, that's a nice pale coyote. She's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a birthday for me, you know. Uh, I don't get to spend a lot of time with him during the week because I'm out on the road. And hunting with my boy is, uh, and it's just our time together. I mean, how could it get better than that, right? Give me some. Washington. <laughs> Good job, dude. Great Good hunting. Job, Great company. No, he's not the best, but he's <laughs> one of them. Yeah. And best of all, the passing on of a great tradition. Oh, well, he'll keep me humble. <laughs> there you go.